is risen. Glory, Glory, is risen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today in the Gospel reading, some things seem to be a bit of a mystery. When Joseph took Christ and wrapped him only in linen, but didn't put the herbs and spices that would normally have been included. Because it was late on the preparation day, the next day being the Sabbath, it wasn't possible to tend to the body of Christ. But they had purchased the myrrh, aloes, and spices on the preparation day and waited until early at following the, the day of preparation and the day of the Holy Sabbath to go to the tomb to anoint the body of Christ and to put the myrrhs and aloes and spices in that should have been there. Mary of Magdala came first, earliest, even before the dawn, and she encountered Christ. And this is when Christ said, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended. And then again coming back together with the other myrrh-bearing women to bring the myrrh and aloes and spices to the grave to find that Christ had risen from the dead. And they were the first to proclaim the risen Christ. And for this reason, these women are called by the Orthodox holy apostles. There were several females who were holy apostles in the East. And uh, among them, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph and Jude and Salome. And uh, St. Nino of Georgia, who was a slave girl who illumined the whole kingdom of Georgia for the name of Jesus Christ and several other great women. So we read today in the epistle how the apostles ordered Christians to choose out deacons to serve. Because the word deacon means a servant or one who serves. And we know that in the ancient church, of course, there were many women who were deacons as well. And they were charged with distributing the food to the poor and distributing clothing and distributing alms wherever they were needed. Many of the deacons also during the great persecutions took communion to those who were in prison waiting to be martyred. And yet of these seven deacons, like Judas, one would betray the faith. And the apostles would say of him, he went out from us, but he was not of us. But Nicholas, the proselyte of Antioch, founded the heresy that we call Nicolaitans. And the Nicolaitan heresy grew very powerful, going all the way from Cappadocia, from those parts that are now Turkey, all the way into Egypt. And Apostle Peter writes about them and warns against them. Those who followed the teaching of Balaam, because Balaam advised that if Israel could be led into riotous and perverse living, that they could be defeated. And Nicholas, the proselyte of Antioch, decided that following the Gnostic teaching, that you could exhaust the body by riotous living. The two schools of these Gnostics. One said you had to destroy the body by extreme asceticism, and the other said that you had to destroy the body by riotous living until the body was broken down. So that even among those earliest ones, there were those who betrayed the faith, not only Judas, but Nicholas, the founder of the Nicolaitans. But the myrrh-bearing women today show the great courage so often underestimated are women in our societies and cultures. And for centuries since the fall of Constantinople at least, women have been devalued and degraded so much in society. And yet these are the ones who had the courage to go while it was yet dark. In a very dangerous time, in a very dangerous place. To the grave of Christ. Out of such great love and compassion. And yet, though they were going to anoint a dead body, yet they went with the faith and the hope and the love, which was rewarded 
by them being the first to hear that Christ had risen, and by them becoming the first apostles who had announced the resurrection of Christ. And it does take courage, but also sometimes a bit of silence to proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and to proclaim that he is risen. You see with what arrogance and condescending so many Christians preach the gospel today. With what self-righteousness and sometimes with genuine hate and malice is the gospel proclaimed. And it cannot be the gospel of Jesus Christ when it is proclaimed by self-righteousness, by hatred, by malice, by prejudice, by condescension. But that is something that comes from Satan who wishes to drive people away from the church, who wishes to turn the younger generation away from Jesus Christ. It's a great thing, brothers and sisters, that these women had such boldness and such courage. And we, if we will hear it, can also become like the myrrh-bearing women because we have to bear the myrrh of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our hearts. Not the gospel of Christians, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not the gospel of this sect or that sect or that cult or that religious body, but the gospel of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ, you remember what he taught us and how he set for us an example in this world. But Jesus Christ has gone missing in Christianity today. We have instead a blind and cold, icy ideology in its place. So today, let's see what the myrrh that was born to the tomb of Christ was an unfailing faith in the promises that he had made even though they had seen him sealed in the tomb. An unfailing love that made them risk even their lives to go in that dark morning to the tomb of Jesus Christ to minister to his body. An absolute hope that did not give up the expectation that his promises would be fulfilled. And as we say in one of the hymns, Hades took a body and met God face to face. And these women went to seek a body and they met the living God face to face. Let's take them up the myrrh and aloes and sweet spices of a genuine compassion, not a fake compassion. Oh, I love them, but I have compassion on them, but there is no but. There's love and there's compassion without any kind of qualifications. Let us embrace our Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. And like the Burberry women, let us take the sweet smelling spices of an unquenchable faith, an unconquerable hope and a sure belief in the certain promises that our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ has given to us in the hope of the resurrection from the dead, in the hope of paradise reopened. If we take the spices and myrrh and aloes of the kind of love and compassion and forgiveness that Christ taught, we also shall meet the living God face to face in the glory of his kingdom. Pay heed to your hearts, brothers and sisters. Pay heed to the gospel that you pretend to preach or really preach. And are you preaching the gospel of yourself? Are you preaching from the fullness of your own heart? Are you preaching from the Old Testament? Or are you preaching the gospel of the Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ? who nailed to the cross, stretched out his arms in co-suffering love for all of mankind. All of mankind, brothers and sisters. 
Let us therefore stretch out our hearts to all of mankind and try to encompass all with that gospel that our Lord Jesus Christ gave us. Not from the fullness of our own hearts, but from the fullness of his own heart. Amen.